Good morning, Secretariat and all the connected members. Huye Moare. Good morning, um, I'm sure we can be able to start, uh, Secretary, if you can just have a quick check so that we can actually go around, yes. We currently only have seven members, but we can proceed if you so wish to. Well, um, we do have the quorum with the seven. Correct, Chair. Yeah. So maybe we can actually do the quick roll call. No problem, Chair. I'll do okay. so. Mrs. Hermans. Honorable Hammonds. Good morning, Chair. Good morning, everyone on the platform. Morning. Welcome. Mr. Mbuyani. Honorable Mbuyani. Good morning and good morning to the colleagues. Good morning, Honorable Mbuyani. Your, your connectivity, just check it. Uh, you are a bit crackling, uh, but welcome and good morning. Chair, Mr. Burns, Namashi, Chair. Honorable Benz Namashi. Molo Slano, Namalunga Committee. Ewe, Molo Nawe, Engosi. Welcome. Chair, Ms. Yako, Chair. Honorable Yako. Morning, Chair. Morning, everybody. Good morning. Welcome. Chair, Mr. Cuthbert, Chair. Honorable Cuthbert. Good morning, Chairperson. Just morning. also to note the late coming of Mr. McPherson. He's in a party meeting and he should join us in 15 minutes time. Thank you. Good morning. Welcome. Chair, Mr. Thring, Chair. Honorable Thring. Uh, morning, Chair. Morning, colleagues. Good morning. Welcome. Chair, Mr. Mulder, Chair. Honorable Mulder. There's a bit of a crackling on your connectivity. If you can just check it, Honorable uh, Mulder, as a well, please. Sir, thank you, Chair. Okay. Che, thank you. Ms. Mutahum, Chair. Honorable Mutahum. Good morning, Chair. Good morning, everyone. I'm present. Good morning, welcome. Um, Chair, that's the members we have currently on the platform. I assume other members are just trying to join and we will indicate that to Chair. So we- Well, I, th I think we, we can quickly just go to the apologies if you've got any, because we've got one of a uh, possibility joining late uh, for McPherson. Chair, we will just follow up on Ms. Muatse. Chair, she's normally on the platform by this time. She may have challenges linking up, Chair, but we- okay. will Ms. Hermans, Chair. Honorable Hermans. Yes, uh, Honorable Moat says just indicated to me that she's struggling with network, but she's she will continue trying to log on. Okay. Okay. Secretariat, if you can assist uh, with the um, Honorable Moat. We'll see what we can do from yeah. outside, Chair. Um, so okay. we have the two apologies that will join us later. Then the, we have the full complement of members, Chair. So we'll be able to we'll proceed with the top, move, looking at the agenda for adoption chair. Yeah, so I, I think what if uh, we can actually then pick up the agenda, the agenda of for today's meeting. I think uh, we we actually did uh, look at the apologies, and uh, in the adoption, there's two item. We have the briefing by the DTIC of the first quarter. A performance for 2020-2021. And we also have the consider consideration of the first draft of the report uh, on the oversight visit to Houting and Basulu Natal. So those are the two items on the agenda before you, honorable members. Uh, if ever maybe I can hear um, your acceptance or amendment or changes Honourable members. Can we proceed? Honourable Hammonds. Good morning, Chair. I would like to uh, propose adoption of the agenda as tabled. Thank you very much. Um, any second? Recording in progress. 
Any second? Honorable members. Chair, we have Mr. Mbuyani, Chair. Honorable Mbuyani. Thank you, Chair, once more. Uh, I second the proposal for Dr. Kitchen. Thank you very much. Let's check if ever there's an op any objection. And in the absence, uh, maybe we can actually then proceed. Um, I think, yes. My, my apologies, Chair. Just to indicate that Ms. Mwatsi has joined the, on, is on the platform, Chair. Okay, okay. No, that's quite helpful. Welcome, Honorable Mwatsi. Thank um, you, Chairperson. Thanks very much. And um, le let me just say there's actually slight uh, um, process relating to the program. So I thought I should just do a briefing uh, because in, in the first item we agreed for to, uh, the purpose is to receive a briefing by the DTIC on the uh, fourth quarter financial and non-financial performance for 2020 to 2021 financial year. This is so that the committee can assess the performance of the national departments against its sources, resources allocated in compliance with section five of the money bills amended procedure and related matters, which is act number nine of 2009. So I think that's the part of the briefing by the department. Uh, we will actually then be inviting them just to see who's here with us. The second part of the agenda is the consideration of the first draft of the report of the oversight visit to Gauteng and Guazulu Natal. The committee is to consider the first draft. Um, and let me just do The, the committee is to consider the first draft report of its recent visit to KwaZulu Natal and Gauteng. This was a visit which was uh, necessitated because of the impact of the vandalism and looting in the businesses and trade in the provinces. These acts of vandalism affected all types of enterprises and manufacturers. Uh, which form an integrated part of the domestic economy, as these two provinces form part of the economic hub of the country. So I think those are the two main issues one wanted to raise uh, before we actually pick up. Uh, just a small point, I wanted just to inform the committee as well that um, I have got a booking for a flight at 12.30 from Oar Tambo to Cape Town. So there's been actually difficulty just to get appropriate flights. So I will actually be sneaking out while connected at 10.30. So, but I wanted to actually make sure that there's somebody on standby to actually take over when I'm actually sneaking out. So honorable members, if you can actually just say um, quickly before we take the first presentation and invite the department and the ministry, uh, be able to actually just agree that uh, uh, when I drive out, because I don't know if the connectivity, at least there will be someone on standby. Can I ask that at least you uh, consider a member that can be able to assist uh, from 10.30, because I'm actually 50 kilometers from the airport. And I think uh, if the flight is 12.30, I should be starting to move at 10.30 without disrupting the program. Can I actually check uh, then, um, honorable members, if you can actually assist me to get someone on standby so that I don't disrupt the meeting when I actually okay. try to get to the meeting. Yes, yes, uh, Secretary. May I suggest that in terms of the rules, Chair, we elect an acting chair on, on that, with, until when you leave, Chair, so that we can have an acting chair operating in your absence if you're not able to, to, to connect with us. 
So okay. may I call Ben Chair for a, a, a nomination, nomination for acting chair, chairperson? Okay, honorable members. Uh, chair Ms. Mwachi raised the hand earlier, Chair. Honorable Mwachi. Uh, thank you, Chairperson. Good morning and good morning, everyone. I want to uh, nominate of Honorable Mudaw to be the acting chairperson in your, your uh, absence. There's a mover for an acting chair. Can I get a seconder? Chair Mrs. Hermans, Chair. Honorable Hammonds. Hey, unfortunately, uh, Honorable Mutawung is in the same position as you, and she's also commuting. Uh, we oh. had agreed that she would act, but she is unfortunately also uh, busy traveling to Cape Town, so she's unable to. Yeah, that's the bookings. The flights are a bit crazy. Yeah. yeah. And uh, can I just get a, a, a nomination? So which means actually she will be still uh, on the same situation. So let's have another name uh, suggested, honorable members. Chair Ms. Mwatsi again, Chair. Honorable Mwatsi. Okay, thank you, Chairperson, and we accept the apology. I nominate the name of honorable uh, Mbuyan. Honorable Mbuyane. Um, let's get a second. Chair Ms. Mutahun, hands as raised, Chair. Honorable Mutahun. Chair, um, before, we, before we have Mr. Mutahun, Chair, may Mr. Mbuyani raise his hand, Chair? So I don't know if he has the same similar challenge. Okay, Mbuyani. Honorable Mbuyani. Chairperson, thank you, man. We, I think we're having the same challenge number in terms of the and in terms of the meeting. So uh, I don't know. If we can quickly just do the meeting quickly, Chairperson, that will assist. So Mbuyane accepts that uh, because you should be able to actually disconnect at 12. I think it, it, it will be possible for us to do that. Um, can I get a second? Ms. Mutahum, Chair. Honorable Mutahum. Thanks, Chair. Uh, I second the nomination by Honorable Moate. Okay. Thank you very much. Because Honorable Mwiani, the meeting is 9 to 12, as we actually have it. And um, can we check if ever there's an objection? If not, can we then proceed and um, invite the department um, to be able to actually speak to us led by our uh, DG. And so that at least we can get sense of the, um, the program. Honorable um, Secretariat, the team from um, the department, DG, I'm sure you connected. Um, good uh, good morning, Chair, and good morning to the honourable members. Uh, I'm just waiting for the um, colleagues in Parliament to assist with the loading of the presentation. We would also try and uh, be mindful of, of your time, um, understanding the constraints um, that uh, you're finding yourself under. Um, okay. Chair, um, Honorable members, so maybe I can actually just say uh, we will welcome uh, our DG Malebu Mabiche Thompson, and I'm sure you can actually also introduce your team and then take us through. Thank you, DG. Uh, thank you, thank you, Chairperson. Uh, with with us uh, today um, is uh, um, um, our CFO Shabir uh, Khan. Uh, our acting uh, COO, group COO, um, Nontombi Matomela, um, DDG uh, Corporate Services, I'm just taking the names as I've uh, received them, um, uh, Sarah Chwani, 
uh, D, uh, DDG, uh, who's also our chief economist, uh, Stephen Hannibal, uh, DDG of uh, CS, uh, CCR, Dr. Evelyn Masocha, our acting head of Invest SA, um, Yunus Hussein, uh, Ms. Tanya Fanelis, who is uh, in the competition uh, section of the department, uh, Susan Mangole, currently acting in uh, industrial financing, where I'm ordinarily at, uh, Maudu Mulifani um, uh, in our uh, special economic zones and transformation section, uh, Mpo Ramaka, um, who is in the CFO's office, and uh, Elizabeth Van Rienen, who's, uh, who's standing in for Xavier uh, Karim, our, 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 our DDG responsible for um, uh, trade negotiations. So that, 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 that is the, the team um, that, that uh, should be connected today on the platform, uh, Chairperson. Chairperson, then with your permission, I will uh, just go straight into the presentation. If I may ask that we quickly move to slide two. The presentation is structured as follows. We will uh, just quickly take the committee through an economic overview, uh, some of our strategic imperatives, a summary of our fourth uh, quarter performance, and uh, also um, financial uh, performance. Chair, I know that um, the, the committee may very well want to receive feedback on um, the latest of what is happening uh, in the in the e economy, our brief was uh, for today to um, stick to the fourth quarter uh, report, with the understanding that um, the minister, I think, fairly shortly will be coming to the committee to present the work that we've been doing, um, arising from what happened in uh, KZN and parts of um, of 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 how day. So the 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 presentation itself will confine um, itself to the fourth quarter, which is three months ago, um, over three months ago actually, and the 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 fourth quarter uh, uh, report. Uh, next slide. Okay. Um, as at uh, that point, uh, of course, we were uh, uh, dealing with a, a global uh, economy um, that was uh, projected to uh, slowly grow from a contraction of 3.2%, which took place um, in uh, 2020. Um, at that point, the forecasts were um, that uh, we should see uh, improvement and um, that um, the improvement would be a result of the increased levels of vaccination across the world that is now um, leading to stabilization of uh, supply chains and uh, also bringing back uh, some bit of uh, consumer confidence. Next slide. So um, most countries um, uh, would have uh, now deployed uh, measures uh, to mitigate against the damage uh, costs by uh, COVID-19, and as I had indicated, that um, for uh, the most part, even the forecasters were saying, the more the jabs are available and uh, people are taking those jabs, uh, jabs, the more we are able to stabilize the global economy and the more we've got a, 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 a better prospect of uh, actually supporting creation um, of, uh, of more jobs. And it is for that reason that a number of governments across the world have uh, prioritized uh, acceleration of vaccine production and also um, a deployment um, of the vaccine. And uh, I think it's similar here in South Africa, where we are also part of um, the producing infrastructure of, uh, of these uh, vaccines through some of um, our pharmaceutical uh, uh, companies. And uh, I think hence the, the, the important work that was done uh, to make sure that not only 
are we producing these vaccines, but those vaccines are also um, uh, able to increase um, the stock of vaccines that are, that are there for um, South Africans. Next slide, please. Um, the uh, domestic uh, economic uh, outlook, uh, as members can see that um, at that point, the uh, outlook um, was um, not looking as, um, as, uh, as good with a contraction that was expected of um, about uh, 7% uh, in, 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 our, in, our, in our growth. And uh, I think that, um, that, that that contraction again uh, mainly due to the COVID uh, pandemic, which indeed did catch uh, our economy uh, in a slightly more vulnerable uh, state. And that is why it's important that uh, the vaccination is rolled out as quick as possible, uh, that we stabilize the situation and get um, uh, our growth uh, sectors uh, back on track again. Next slide. Yeah, I've already spoken uh, to um, the, the different uh, projections and uh, uh, the fact that um, while uh, there was a, a, a real GDP increased uh, in the first quarter of uh, 2021, following another positive growth uh, of 5.8% um, uh, in uh, the last quarter of um, of, uh, of of uh, 2020, uh, we, 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 we are still of the, of the view that as um, the program of uh, vaccination uh, takes uh, root, that um, we will start seeing now um, positive uh, growth uh, trend. Uh, you'd see there that there are a number of, um, of uh, uh, sectors which had led um, the 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 the, uh, the growth and uh, chief amongst them is the mining sector and while this is very important um, this is subject of a of a of a of a mineral uh, price boom and uh, as we've learned um, previously um, that uh, dependence on uh, the changes in the in mineral uh, cycle and um, the the prices there. Uh, is quite uh, uh, dangerous. So it's important that we continue with the work that we need to do to diversify uh, the economy so that we strengthen the contribution of, among others, construction, manufacturing, and uh, agriculture. Uh, we strengthen their contribution to our GDP. Next slide. Okay. I have spoken to the, uh, the GDP outlook. Uh, I think here the most important thing to note uh, is that we continue to uh, maintain a positive uh, a trade uh, balance. And um, that is uh, very uh, important uh, for us to, to, to maintain. And as I said, uh, because of the, uh, the mineral uh, price um, uh, boom that we are we, we now a beneficiary of, uh, we need to be careful how those um, uh, um, resources, the additional resources that we hadn't anticipated are used. And uh, our view is that they must support growth in the real uh, economy. They must support the productive sectors uh, of the economy, manufacturing, as I indicated, agriculture, construction, and the building of the required infrastructure to make the economy competitive. Next slide. Um, I think it, it, it should be expected that in an environment where we were dealing with a pandemic, um, that uh, gross fixed capital formation would decline uh, because um, investors, both in the, in, uh, particularly in the private sector, um, would be worried um, about um, the ability to recoup um, uh, their funds and uh, to make a profit of the investments that uh, they need to make. And uh, in an uncertain environment, it is always the case that primarily um, in, the, in, the, in the private sector, you would see that there would be a private sector uh, uh, decline. 
and in a general investment. So uh, th this was the same picture uh, that, uh, that then uh, followed uh, due to um, the, the situation we were dealing with in as far as uh, COVID uh, is concerned. And you'd see that this uh, same picture is actually consistent even with the rest of the world. Thank you, next slide. I think on the employment side, um, uh, while um, employment is uh, uh, at around uh, 15 million, we do still have uh, uh, 7.2 million of those that are unemployed and uh, 3.1 million of discouraged workers. And uh, I think the, the 7.2 uh, million and that 3.1 uh, million um, has focused our attention in terms of how do we make sure that uh, when we are building in the recovery, uh, the recovery is built much better, it's much more inclusive and um, with a lot more potential uh, to create jobs. Um, and that is, uh, I think, at the core of what we are trying to achieve with the master plans um, that uh, the minister has come uh, previously to the committee uh, to present and the committee has taken some of uh, those master plans, uh, the presentation of those uh, in much more detail uh, uh, in order to understand exactly how we are going to be dealing with uh, this particular issue of um, addressing the high levels of uh, unemployment uh, in the country. Next slide. With regards to our trading situation, I had indicated previously that we, we had enjoyed um, a, a trade uh, surplus and uh, our, our surplus um, with the rest of the world uh, continues. Um, I had um, also cautioned that uh, because the surplus is uh, on the basis of a, 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 a mineral uh, super cycle, um, we, we need to just ensure that the proceeds that come out of it are then put into infrastructure, they're put into um, uh, the rest of, um, or, or of the economy in order to diversify our de uh, dependence uh, from uh, the, the, the mining sector. Next slide. Uh, here, I think what we're showing is, uh, Chair, um, our trade surplus, I think, which we continue to enjoy with the rest of the uh, continent. And uh, of course, uh, towards the, 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 the continent, uh, we are trading in uh, manufactured value added uh, products. And um, uh, while we, 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 we celebrate the fact that we have a trade surplus, I think it's important that we, 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 we also raise the fact that it's um, for us uh, through initiatives such as the AFCF uh, TA and uh, the various um, uh, initiatives to get uh, value chains going. Um, it's important that the rest of the continent uh, also trades with far much more uh, value added goods than what we are currently seeing, that we diversify and grow that basket and that increasingly um, we start uh, trading um, within uh, the continent as we have seen with um, uh, successful regional groupings that one of the basic tenants uh, is uh, trading uh, with each other. So um, the, the trade surplus, we, we, we welcome it. We think it's, a, it's, a, it's important um, that, uh, that, that, that we have it, but it's also important that we ensure that as we're working with the rest of our sister countries on the continent, um, we improve and diversify that uh, uh, trade uh, basket. Next slide, please. Um, uh, with the with the uh, with the BRICS countries, uh, our trade uh, deficit uh, is um, is is uh, narrowing, um, and uh, our our trade, uh, particularly um, with uh, with uh, um, with 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 China, would have uh, led to uh, this narrowing. I think mainly due to the the the, the mineral uh, super cycle that I mentioned. Next slide, please. Um, members would be aware of the 
um, the, 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 the strategic imperatives of the department um, that we're working towards uh, accelerating um, a, a, a building of an economy that is globally competitive, um, which uh, is inclusive, um, which uh, is able to absorb much more people into employment, and which is also built on the full potential um, of all citizens. And uh, in the slides uh, that would uh, follow, we would start highlighting some of the activities that we had undertaken in the quarter in question in order to uh, address that. Next slide, please. Next slide. And these are the, the programs of the, de, of the department and uh, of the uh, 34 KPIs that we set ourselves, we were able to achieve uh, 29. And uh, in the main, those uh, uh, KPIs that were not achieved were uh, linked uh, to amendments that we, we had to do, refocusing that had to be done uh, in order to deal with the, uh, the, the, the challenges arising uh, from uh, COVID and uh, in instances where our plans would have been disrupted um, by um, the, 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 the COVID uh, pandemic. And uh, we were moving now from uh, set plans to immediate actions that needed to be done um, in order to continue to uh, support uh, the economy. I'll talk about some of those actions when I report um, in, uh, on, on the, uh, the, the various performance of the different uh, uh, programs of the department. Uh, next slide. All right, um, I think in administration, the most important uh, to, uh, to mention in as far as um, our KPIs are concerned and what we were able to achieve is that against a target of maintaining 50% uh, of senior management um, uh, 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 level services being uh, uh, done or uh, the, those posts being occupied by women, uh, the department has um, recorded 53%. Similarly, with uh, people who are living with uh, disabilities uh, against the target of 3.5, we've recorded uh, 3.9. And then uh, with regards to creditors uh, who uh, uh, must be paid um, within 30 days, we continue uh, to uh, maintain a record of paying 100% of eligible uh, creditors. Um, within um, the, uh, uh, the 30 days. Next slide, please. Um, on uh, trade negotiations, uh, uh, on trade policy negotiations and uh, cooperation, um, we continued uh, with uh, our ne uh, negotiations. We continued with investment cooperation, uh, the facilitation um, uh, uh, work uh, that we do there, uh, ensuring that um, in the way that we uh, negotiate these agreements, we are accruing value um, for the South African uh, economy. Uh, that work has, uh, has been done with the AFCFTA, um, the work that we've done with, uh, with the SADC through the SADC uh, EU EPA and um, the WTO. Um, I think with the WTO, it's important to mention um, that uh, some of uh, the important work that we've been doing for many years had come to fruition, um, including the work that we were doing on TRIPS, uh, which uh, then led to um, the agreement uh, that then allows uh, many developing countries to form part of the production value chain, particularly of pharmaceuticals at a time where we need uh, vaccines and we need those vaccines in a cost-effective manner. So next slide, please. I think I've, uh, I've spoken to this slide, next slide. Um, and uh, Chair, I note that uh, the colleagues may have uh, updated a slightly older uh, version uh, than uh, the, the, the last version that we, we had um, submitted 
uh, to Parliament. Uh, nonetheless, I think we would just work um, on this version in the interest of, uh, of time, but we had submitted a, an amended version. So on the um, industrial, um, special industrial development and economic transformation side, uh, we continued with the work that we had brought to the committee in as far as uh, the Tswane, uh, SCZ uh, is concerned, uh, the fact that uh, that SCZ is now fully uh, subscribed and uh, it's really an auto SCZ that is anchored uh, by uh, Ford uh, Motor Companies, all the, their, um, their subcontractors, most of them new, are uh, located uh, in, 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 in that SCZ. It's one of those SCZs as we had indicated previously. Um, that epitomizes the model that we will be following going forward, that uh, an SCZ will not be declared if um, we are not sure that there will be investor take up so that we reduce the time between uh, the big infrastructure investment that must get an SCZ up and going and um, getting, the SC, uh, getting investors in, getting uh, jobs going and making sure that we get return uh, from, um, from that uh, investment. So it is, a, I think, an important um, a, a example of how we are going to be taking the SCZ uh, program uh, forward and what we are dealing with in as far as the scale of investment in the Tswane SCZ, that is just uh, in Mamilodi, uh, we're talking about a um, $1 billion investment that has been injected uh, into the economy. Next slide, please. Um, I think related to that, um, uh, the, that, 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 um, that investment, um, also uh, as part of our master plans. Again, as I indicated, that our intention is to ensure that um, as we, we, we work with the different companies to uh, grow uh, 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 the various sectors where the DTIC operates, uh, that we do so in a way that is much more inclusive. So we have um, now used uh, the equity equivalent program, which is part of the triple BEE, um, a program um, to support entry of um, SMMEs and uh, local suppliers into the auto uh, value chain. And so far, we've got seven uh, OEMs uh, that are part of um, that initiative, and uh, they have set uh, aside uh, six billion that would then uh, be used uh, to assist our local S uh, SMEs uh, to get market access and uh, also be um, at a position that they can exploit um, the potential uh, inclusion into uh, global supply chains. Next slide. The next slide. Next slide, thank you. Um, on the industrial competitiveness and uh, growth program, this is where uh, mainly our master plan uh, 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 programs uh, are located. We've continued our work on the agro uh, uh, master plan, uh, which now includes uh, funding that has been made available uh, to support um, uh, um, agro processing sector and that funding uh, is uh, with the IDC, similarly with the furniture uh, master plan. Uh, we've concluded that one now and um, uh, stakeholders have now signed off uh, on, on that master plan. The importance of that activity of stakeholders signing off on the master plan is that now we co-own this master plan um, with, uh, with, uh, with industry and all of us are committed to the actions uh, that are in that in, in that master plan. And very soon, uh, we will then be coming to parliament as we have done with a number of uh, the other master plans to come and report to parliament what is the progress with regards to implementation of the master plan. I think we've done it for steel and metal fabrication. We've done it for um, uh, the sugar sector. I think we've also done it for poultry. So um, what uh, that signing signifies is that now 
we are poised to start with uh, implementation um, with our, our, our different uh, stakeholders and, and, and partners. And uh, as I indicated, we would be coming uh, to the committee um, with uh, further feedback. Next slide, please. Next slide. Um, on the uh, localization uh, front, um, Chair, uh, what we, we have uh, done, again, uh, through the work that we're doing with the different uh, master plans and um, localization being an important uh, point um, area for the, for, the, for the department, we are supporting uh, local companies um, to get um, a, a, a part of um, the available uh, market uh, internally in, uh, in South Africa, particularly in areas where uh, some of that uh, market uh, is within government um, that uh, they, they, they be allowed uh, to also uh, participate. And uh, there was a tender um, that, that has been awarded to one of the uh, companies who, are, who do uh, pat uh, inshore patrol uh, vessels uh, to make sure that those vessels are procured um, from South Africa and um, they are procured from companies um, that are manufacturing uh, in South Africa. Um, uh, next slide, please. <coughs> Uh, um, I think we've, uh, we've spoken about uh, this uh, in relation to uh, procurement um, uh, and, uh, and uh, localization um, that we've also uh, published APDP2 um, uh, 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 regulations. And uh, I think what those regulations does, which is quite critical for the committee uh, to note, is that they take us into um, the implementation of the auto master plan to make sure that those uh, localization commitments that had been made, the transformation commitment that has been made are now uh, going to be implemented um, based on a regulatory a framework uh, that facilitates uh, that uh, implementation. Um, uh, next slide, uh, please. Uh, next slide. Um, another uh, next slide. I'm just trying to save the committee time because um, the, the 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 full set of report was sent. Um, on um, on 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 this slide, uh, chairperson, as I had indicated, um, that um, we continue to implement the steel and metal uh, fabrication uh, master plan, which itself was endorsed by our partners, our social partners. Um, in February 2021, we also had a, a launch of this master plan at one of our steel fabricators. Um, in actual fact, that's a fabricator. That location was set to have been demolished because there, there was a feeling that um, there wasn't enough market uh, to, to keep uh, that uh, particular um, company uh, going, that aspect of the company going, but just through the sheer um, uh, entrepreneurship of um, the, 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 um, the, the, the company owners, uh, they were able to um, rebuild that company and uh, with, the, with the support of the IDC and um, a number of uh, other funders, uh, they were able to continue with, uh, uh, with the production and also include new production uh, products, some of which are exported uh, to uh, the, the US. And um, that is, uh, that, that, that is uh, the exact type of outcome that we want uh, the master plans to assist us with. I, I see the colleagues, uh, I, I'm not sure if you are loading the, the right presentation because this was, the, yes. Thank you. If we can go further down, yes, further down. There we go, yeah, right there, okay. And then on industrial uh, financing, um, we had committed um, uh, that uh, we will use those incentives to leverage investment and uh, chair, we've done exactly that. Five billion 
of uh, projected investment uh, to support around uh, 13,000 jobs were secured through our programs. And um, we have developed an economic distressed uh, facility program um, in the form of an interest makeup scheme. And uh, the purpose of this was to support companies that were in uh, distress so that we retain the jobs, we retain the industrial uh, capacity. And this is part of the work that we've now had to uh, start doing um, as we see companies coming back to us, uh, reporting a number of areas of challenges ar arising out of COVID and us having to now uh, be agile. Uh, enough uh, to support them in real time so that we do support the, 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 the jobs and we make sure that we retain our industrial capability. We've continued uh, with the consultations that we had said to uh, Parliament we will do with the banks uh, to forge a relationship that will help to ensure that there is funding that flows uh, to the productive sectors of the economy. Uh, we're not yet at a point where we can announce um, some of the key milestones uh, that we have locked in, but I'm sure very soon we will be able to, um, uh, to come to uh, Parliament with that. And uh, with the work that we've been doing through our incentive program, we've also supported um, 3.8 billion worth of export uh, revenue. And um, I think on the, on the, um, the right-hand side uh, corner there at the bottom, that is uh, just um, an outline of our target entrepreneurs. Uh, we've supported about 31% of uh, black entrepreneurs, 17% women and youth uh, owned uh, enterprises. We're raising it to you as what we've achieved now, but we're also mindful that uh, we need to up that uh, significantly. And we're trying to bring partnerships to bear uh, to, to help us um, in that regard. Next slide. Um, um, again, on uh, industrial financing, uh, just sharing with the committee the uh, geographic spread of the projects um, that have been supported. Again, this is another area where we need to improve uh, to make sure that even in those underserved uh, provinces, we start um, uh, supporting uh, industrial capa capability there. Of course, with the, with the, with the limitations uh, that we have, but um, the work that we are doing with the, with the provinces and uh, with the metros and uh, in some uh, cases, um, the smaller municipalities, uh, we believe will very soon uh, help us uh, to be able to up the numbers in some of the key provinces where we've noted that the uptake of our incentives is fairly low. Uh, the province such as Limpopo, such as Mpumalanga, um, Northern Cape and the Free State, um, the Northwest, those are some of the provinces where we are still very, very concerned that uh, the numbers must come up. And there's a concerted effort now to work with the provinces and also with the local government uh, level uh, to, um, to bring up the numbers and uh, to be able uh, to start having targeted programs uh, to support entrepreneurs uh, in those localities. Next slide. On um, export uh, development, promotion and outward investment, I think one of the important uh, areas that we need to mention to Parliament is the work that we do uh, to, uh, to train and prepare a new entrants uh, to enter the export markets. And um, with, the, with, the, with the training that we did in this particular quarter, 31% uh, uh, of the trainees were youth, which is very, very encouraging. And of the 317 individuals who were trained, 134 uh, were women. We've um, had to morph uh, the manner in which uh, we support uh, our exporters um, from um, the physical in-market uh, 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 export support where we sometimes would take our exporters to expose them uh, to the different markets. And now we've migrated that 
to uh, different online platforms, which we've been engaging in um, throughout this period in order to uh, continue to support uh, exporters and uh, make sure that our products um, still uh, uh, enjoys a prevalence in the markets um, that uh, we, 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 we anticipate uh, those products to go and also in the markets where we, we are already uh, participating. So um, you would see in this program from the report that you would have received that there would be a number of online interactions uh, that we had done as the DTIC and we had done also those in partnership with a number of local and uh, international uh, players. Next slide, please. Um, next slide. Okay, and uh, these are some of um, the the work that we've uh, we've done in the markets that we are targeting in Asia and the the Middle East, and uh, also in uh, the Americas. Of course, this will um, uh, include um, the, the the U.S., Canada, and uh, a number of um, uh, islands and uh, those um, uh, countries um, that are in both uh, North and uh, South America. Next slide. In terms of our inward um, in uh, uh, investor attraction and facilitation uh, chairperson, we've achieved the pipeline that we had set ourselves of uh, 11.1 um, uh, uh, billion. Uh, there are a number of major investments that even through a very difficult time, um, we were able to uh, secure. And as is part of the work of uh, program eight, we were also seized with unblocking a, a number of challenges for companies to make sure that they invest as quickly as possible. They are able to get their experts as uh, quickly as possible into the country so that they continue to create uh, jobs here in, in, in South Africa and that we raise the importance of um, the challenges that uh, uh, companies uh, face and um, also suggest innovative uh, solutions in a number of platforms that we would um, uh, participate in. Um, key among those um, is um, the ease of doing business um, that we are seized with. Uh, to ensure that uh, we place South Africa as a, a destination um, that is uh, not just open for business, where it is very easy not just to register a business, but to get it going and uh, a, a, a be able to help us with what are our, our, our national objectives um, of uh, creating jobs and embedding important supply chains in the economy. Next slide, please. On the competition policy and economic planning uh, side, um, this is the area of work in the department where we try to um, uh, um, uh, uh, manage uh, the effect of um, the concentrated structure uh, of, uh, of, of our economy. We would look at uh, measures, uh, we would look at non-competitive behavior, not just to support businesses, but also to uh, protect uh, consumers. And uh, you would have uh, seen that uh, this area of work through our competition commission um, was quite active um, in order to ensure that uh, any pr uh, price gouging um, that uh, might take place um, would be subjected uh, to, uh, to, to the provisions of what we expect as normal behavior. Um, uh, in, 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 in competition uh, law, and um, they've taken a number of players uh, to, 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 to task um, for, for, for bridging um, that uh, accepted be, uh, 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 behavior. But one of the things that we have been able to achieve is um, use uh, the, the measures and, and, uh, and uh, the competition outcomes to start putting aside uh, sun, uh, funds um, in collaboration with, uh, with uh, partners in industry. What we are highlighting here is the Coca-Cola 
um, a measure uh, that um, that uh, th through which we were able to create a localization platform, and this platform is supposed to avail um, important um, uh, resources to local enterprises to support a uh, localization. And through this work, I think Coca Cola itself has now um, increased a, a, a procurement of uh, sugar uh, from South Africa in order to, supply, uh, to, to support particularly uh, black sugar cane uh, 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 manufacturers or rather farmers. Um, and here, this is where I think the, the consolidation of uh, the, the, the work that we do for sector development um, uh, uh, comes in uh, with what we do on competition policy. And I think the reason that this measure um, is beginning to, uh, to make a lot more sense and um, that uh, uh, when, while we're dealing with competition issues, we need to deal with it in such a way that it broadens uh, uh, participation, especially of small players, and it allows those small players players to be embedded in a supply chains that they would otherwise have been excluded out of. Next slide, please. On the uh, uh, program 10, this is the economic research and uh, coordination program, a program where we, um, we, we, we use um, a research as a, as a basis uh, to assist uh, in supporting the rest of the work of the of the of the of the department for this quarter um, in uh, question um, the, the the this area of work was focused on um, tracking uh, imports and um, identifying import surges and also export uh, opportunities that would then be fed into the work area that deals with master plans so that we can align the master plans to the important work that we need to, uh, to do to make sure that in as far as it is possible as South Africa, we are consuming a lot more of um, uh, of what we uh, produce, and that we are um, we 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 using every opportunity that we have uh, to be able to uh, to create jobs, and they've also uh, been engaging uh, at uh, at Nedlec. Uh, um, with the social partners around the impact of um, of COVID nineteen and um, the important interventions um, that must be put in place um, in order to support our communities, to uh, support the investing public, to support our entrepreneurs through this very uh, difficult time, and um, they've also been engaged in the important work of ensuring that there's alignment. Um, between the different um, parts or levels uh, or phases uh, of, um, of, uh, of government uh, through uh, MinMEX um, so that uh, we have that, uh, that alignment that is uh, critical for us to implement the programs uh, of the department accurately and uh, make sure that we are also supportive of the local uh, programs that have been uh, put together uh, by both municipalities and also by, by the, the, the provinces uh, in that process. Next slide. On the financial performance, I'll just indicate that we have spent 97.5% uh, of our budget and um, that was to support the work um, that I have presented, at least the highlights of which I've presented, because the work is much deeper than um, the, the, the presentation time would allow that we, we outline. And um, a large part of our savings would have been uh, due to uh, maybe uh, membership, uh, uh, membership fees um, that uh, we, we would have uh, ordinarily had to pay, but uh, which due to a number of circumstances, uh, we, 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 we may have paid a little less than what uh, uh, ordinarily uh, we would have uh, we would have uh, been expected uh, to uh, to pay. So on the financial side, uh, we have sp we we, we spent a, a large uh, chunk of the budget that was appropriated uh, to us um, through um, that vote. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Chairperson. Um, I think in conclusion, this then wraps up um, our, our, our presentation and um, the work that we have done in the quarter. 
as I've indicated, we will be coming to the committee to now um, uh, highlight to the committee some of the actions that we have uh, taken in order to respond to that situation that happened in KZN and in some parts of Gauteng, and uh, also on the economic recovery process going forward. Chair, with that, thank you very much. Thank you, DG and the team. Can I actually then um, request that we move to the next part of members' comments or questions for clarity based on the presentation that we received from the department? Uh, honorable members? Um, comments or clarity seeking questions? Chairperson, we have Mr. Mulder, followed by Mr. Tring at the moment, Chair. Uh, Honorable Mulder and Tring, in that order. Thank you, Chair. Yes, yes. Thank you, Chair. I will um, keep my video switched off. Um, I've got a bit of a signal problem here in Acacia Park. Can no, that's you fine. Clearly? Yes, yes, we can. Okay. Go ahead. Thank you, Chair. Now, I'll be short. Just two, two comments, which is actually a, a general comment that I uh, can make it after all the presentations. Uh, with reference to the risk to outlook um, part of the presentation in page four, and um, there are two, two ideas that I wish to establish and I, and I want the presenter to comment on. The first one being that the Department of Trade, Industry and Competition cannot exist on its own in isolation. Um, we all know that that's a fact. Um, the, the economic growth of South Africa will also depend on the ability of local government to deliver service. We know that the department's localization and, and district municipality model for, for growth is based on the assumption that local government will be able to provide the supporting, the necessary supporting services, which is in fact, in practice, not the case. It's not possible. It's not going to happen. Um, so what I want to know is, um, was this taken into account when this report was compiled that, that all these um, plans and reports, um, the, the, the influence that local government and the lack of, of service delivery has got. And the second one is then corruption. I see no mention of state captured corruption and the influence that um, this unfortunate occurrence had on the economic growth of the fourth quarter. Thank you, Chair. Okay, uh, Honorable Thring. Uh, yeah, thank you, Chair. Uh, Chair, firstly, I think just appreciation as well for the uh, for the presentation. Um, and obviously, uh, as the ACDP, um, we we are there are some concerns, and one of one of the major concerns that we have is uh, is the continued increase in unemployment. One of the goals of uh, DTIC is to to look at creating employment and to ensure that we also have. Uh, sustainable a sustainable economy which means sustainable businesses across the country and one of our roles is to support those businesses um, so that we could actually see an uptick in in employment sadly um, unemployment continues to increase uh, at just over 32 percent on the expanded definition of unemployment is probably probably over 40 percent and of great concern there is that a large percentage of those that are unemployed, some 50 to between 50 to 70 percent, is um, it's youth unemployment. Uh, so clearly, chair, we we still have a, a long uh, long way to go. Yes, we are coming off uh, from the the um, the COVID uh, the lockdowns, which which have hampered uh, many of our businesses and in fact actually decimated some, uh, where there are some that will not be able to recover due to the lockdowns. Um, I, I, I do think that, um, however, having, having said that, our responsibility is to, is to look at uh, some of the low-hanging fruit uh, where we are actually able to, uh, to, increase, uh, to increase employment. 
Um, the other the other aspect here is is the fact that um, while we we have the the pandemic, I think clearly um, uh, South Africa was already in in financial difficulties um, with uh, with the uh, your agencies uh, declaring you know the economy uh, 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 to a junk status uh, junk state the rating agencies to junk status level. Uh, so what our businesses have actually had is a double whammy. Um, you know, lots of mismanagement, um, corruption uh, that that has actually seen seen our economy and bringing our economy to the to the position that it currently is. So, so yes, chair, there's there's a long way to go. Um, I, I think when one looks at the slide on um, gross fixed capital formation uh, and the decline, particularly within the domestic uh, investment, uh, a decrease there of some two point two point five percent. Um, I think it was in the fourth, fourth, uh, the first quarter of 2021. Uh, it again, also is an indication internally of of what uh, the market is looking like. Because clearly, if we want to see foreign direct investment, uh, we have to look at increasing domestic uh, uh, sentiment. And so, when domestic sentiment uh, in terms of the economy is 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 high. Uh, that also acts as an incentive for for foreign direct investment. So I think it is a concern uh, that we that we are seeing uh, the the gross fixed uh, capital formation in in the uh, particularly in the area of domestic uh, decline in domestic domestic investment. Uh, and so that too chair is is a concern. We have to look at increasing um, uh, the capacity of of our uh, local uh, manufacturers, our local businesses. Um, to 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 grow uh, to grow the economy, um, I, I think, Chair, my, my final comment would be on one of the slides that says, you know, more vaccines, more jobs. Um, uh, we must also re remember that um, the vaccines, to a large extent, are still in the trial phase. Um, this has been confirmed by by you know Pfizer, Johnson, and John many of the manufacturers. Uh, it's it's trial three, the third phase of the trial. And so around the world, what we are still seeing is a trial phase of the vaccine. Um, the FDA has not approved the vaccines uh, for use only for what they call emergency use. Um, so there are, there are some concerns and even certainly members of parliament have the concerns. And I see, you know, uh, more vaccines, more jobs. Um, the, the president of the, of the country, and this seems to be moving uh, towards um, man, I'm talking now specifically about the move to make vaccines mandatory. Uh, we must uphold the position of the president um, of the country uh, who said that vaccines will not be made mandatory. But Chair, what we are seeing is many businesses, many businesses, and there's a list of about 10 that we currently have um, that are moving, their employ employers are moving towards making vaccines mandatory putting a huge number of employees at risk. Uh, some are even prepared to resign and this will exacerbate uh, the unemployment problem. So clearly we must not have mixed messages with regards to vaccines um, where the Minister of, of uh, Labor and Employment, uh, Tulas Nexi, basically issued a brief making, uh, giving employers the opportunity to make vaccines mandatory within their field of, of business. Um, this is divisive uh, and clearly may actually result in more jobs being lost. Um, so Chair, that's, um, that's my, these are just some of my comments. Thank you. Chair, we have Mr. Mbuyani, Chair. Honorable Mbuyani. Chair President, thank you for the opportunity. Uh, let me first welcome the report. It's more informative and succinct, Chairperson. Uh, I just have some few clarity-seeking questions around the, the report. Uh, one which is the procurement and localization. Do we, set, do we have any set-aside program uh, for, for this specific procurement and localization? Do we have any set-aside to say, this is young people of this nature and this percentage must be of a set aside program that try to deal with the procurement program and also the localization. Chairperson, the other one is the, the status quo. 
uh, of the SEZ, in particular the one of uh, Nkomazi, SEZ as an agro-processing, and also uh, trying to check the industrial parks around uh, Pumala. Chairperson, uh, we welcome the, the intervention by the department in terms of the industrial financing. Uh, economic distress program will retain the capacity of the industry and also job retain. Uh, but uh, we want to check, man, in terms of the incentive programs, uh, that in terms of provincial uh, interventions, uh, in terms of uptakes, black industrialists, can we be clarified to what are the challenges in those uh, more rural and outskirts provinces? to can intervene because uh, Chairperson, as you, uh, the, the report did, uh, alluded to, uh, that all these provinces must be taken care of because economy is not only two, three provinces that the economy is viable. Uh, I just want to check the rural economic development program in terms of the AFDI's incentive and capacity building of those provinces because really, if they're not sub uh, submitting proposals in terms of business, maybe they lack capacity somewhere, somehow. So I just want to check the department in terms of awareness campaign of all these uh, uh, packages that is in the DIC. And also, Chairperson, the realignment of the master plan, I think it will also uh, assist us because if there's a department, uh, we, we have some uh, master plan and others are on other departments. So I think the realignment of those master plan will be able to assist in, in the economic growth and development, Chairperson. I pause there for now. Thank you for the opportunity. Uh, let, let's see, Secretary, if there are any further hands. No further hands at the moment. Okay. Let, let me just say then now uh, we will actually uh, request the department to actually uh, give feedback and response to the questions that are raised. And I think um, it, it will be a point where Honorable Mbuyane will then uh, take over after the response from the department. I will be staying connected, uh, Honorable uh, Secretariat, and I'm sure we actually can be able to take off from there. Um, let's actually hear from the department, DG, in Thank terms you. of the issues raised. Um, uh, thank you, uh, uh, Chairperson. Safe travels. Um, um, uh, I'll ask uh, some of uh, my colleagues to uh, come in uh, with uh, some of the questions. I'm going to just give an overall uh, response um, to, um, to cover, I think, most of the questions, but um, on some of the specifics, I'll then uh, specifically ask uh, my, um, my 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 colleagues uh, to come in. Um, Honorable Mulder raises an important point of the capacity of our uh, local government um, in, in in general uh, to be able to uh, provide services that assist our companies to remain competitive and to be able to create jobs. I think uh, Honorable Mulder. Um, this is an area that has um, concerned us uh, because in, in, in most instances, we do run into capacity challenges. And um, in some instances, um, we even have to work um, with municipalities through what we call our critical infrastructure program in order to support critical infrastructure that would allow um, uh, uh, industries, companies uh, to operate in a cost-effective manner. So th this is an area that uh, does uh, remain uh, challenging. I think it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's also uh, the same thing that Honorable Mbuyani um, was, uh, was asking in relation to what, what happens with some of uh, the, 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 the uh, rural uh, municipalities, why we're not getting um, uh, any, any, any uh, applications and uptake uh, from, from those areas. So this um, district 
uh, development um, uh, 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 program, the approach uh, that the president has taken. Um, we, are, we are now following that approach to try and deal with these issues um, as they arise, but the, um, uh, the capacity uh, issues uh, remain and um, they, they remain um, uh, throughout uh, the country sometimes. Uh, actually, in even less um, uh, rural municipalities, um, just a provision of um, of uh, infrastructure that is uh, necessary becomes uh, a, a big issue um, and uh, a big hindrance uh, for us uh, to take the work forward. Um, hence, I think through Invest SA, and we also uh, working uh, with the with the colleagues in the Special Economic Zone and Industrial Park um, part of the DTI, we working with municipalities uh, to see how we would uh, assist them um, in order to help them help us uh, to take the the mandate of the of the of the department forward and our joint mandate really of creating jobs and uh, 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 creating vibrant uh, local uh, economies. And it's a, it's a, it's a bit of a, of, a, of a worry every time we would go into a locality and uh, you find that, and we've seen it all around the country consistently. We find that uh, as, the, as the DTI, we are more affair with the enterprises in the localities than the officials. Um, in the different uh, municipalities. It's a, it's a, it's a real worry um, that uh, does need uh, to be corrected. And as we are engaging and working with these municipalities, these are some of the issues that uh, we would raise with them. And where we know that uh, it's a serious capacity challenge that can be uh, solved even by raising the issue, we do bring in the critical infrastructure uh, program, but we believe that uh, the the approach that the president has taken in terms of uh, uh, regional development is actually going to be the approach that will help us uh, through this um, this this issue. Then on the issue of um, of the of the um, the the vaccines and um, what we mentioned in the in the in the presentation. Um, the, we, we, are, we are using the uh, scientific advice um, that has been made uh, available by um, the relevant uh, organizations that says that um, we do need to um, stabilize the economy. We do need to make sure that when people interact, they interact in the safest um, or, uh, of manner and that the available response at the moment, um, it is the vaccines, um, it is in addition um, the guidelines of wearing masks, of um, uh, sanitizing uh, and of uh, social distancing. So what we are putting in the presentation uh, is based on the advice that is currently available and the advice that we've also uh, seen with different uh, countries that are stabilizing their economies and are using um, uh, uh, those mechanisms to come out, to help the economy come out of the restrictions so that uh, the, the, the economy is more stable and it can be poised uh, to, uh, to grow. If that advice uh, changes, new ideas come from the, the medical fraternity that are also what, uh, what, what is part of the general practice, I think we would also be informed uh, by, uh, by that. What we are not saying in, this, um, uh, uh, in the presentation, we're not making a view on whether anything should be made uh, mandatory. We are just emphasizing um, what we are seeing as what is working in countries that are now emerging out of um, the, the, the the negative effects um, of uh, of uh, of the of the of the of of uh, of, uh, of, uh, of COVID, and um, not only are we saying that uh, we are also placing South Africa. I think in the forefront of uh, of the of the response through our own manufacturing capa uh, capability to ensure that some of these things are manufactured here uh, in South Africa and uh, they are part of our uh, our response uh, to the pandemic 
uh, that continues actually um, uh, throughout uh, the world. We agree with Honorable Thring that uh, the 70% um, uh, of, um, of, of uh, unemployment, which is really a burden that the youth are carrying, um, it's not sustainable. And uh, it is urgent that uh, it be a, a result. And um, as we've indicated, that at the moment within the department, through our, our master plans, through the different uh, programs that we are implementing, we are looking at uh, solutions to that. But there are broader and bigger solutions um, that at the, at the government level, uh, we also uh, need uh, to be considering, particularly for the for the for the youth, uh, to ensure that um, we stem this tide of uh, people that may have had many many uh, years, uh, maybe since high school, and in some instances even since university, that people will stay at home for for five, six, seven years without a day. In a, in a workplace. Hence, with our equity equivalent programs, we are now um, using the instrument of BEE to help uh, in uh, inclusion that bring young people in and um, help this, uh, the, the, the small uh, enterprises so that they have an opportunity to grow and be able to absorb uh, many more people um, into, into, into the, uh, the, the economy. Uh, Honorable Mbuyani asked, um, the, the, the question on uh, procurement and uh, localization. Again, on, um, on procurement, uh, our message has been consistent. And um, uh, I think now there are many more companies that are, 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 are understanding what we mean when we say they need to, pro, uh, to prioritize production of goods uh, here in, uh, in, 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 uh, in South Africa so that we don't export jobs. Uh, un, uh, uh, unnecessarily, and they don't need to deal with the pressure of the effects of unemployment. And uh, through the master plans, uh, there's not one master plan where the issue of um, procurement uh, has been challenged. What we are seeing is a number of these companies uh, looking for ways where we can increase uh, local pro uh, production and um, we can increase also uptake uh, market access um, that, 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 that can be made available to local uh, manufacturers. So this, 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 this area of work through the master plans is really a center stage of um, how uh, the, the master plan uh, process uh, is coming together. The, um, the, 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 the different um, uh, target, uh, target groups, we continue to monitor that youth, uh, women, we, con uh, we, 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 we monitor that even beyond uh, the, um, the local production and um, uh, the, the, the designation through the different programs that uh, the department um, is, uh, is uh, implementing. So on, uh, on designation, there are a number of, uh, of, of products that we have uh, already designated. I'll, uh, I'll give an example of the clothing and, uh, and the textile uh, sector that has been de uh, designated for a while. And now we are challenging every single company. We also are challenging South Africans that beyond just the designation, which really uh, is a reflection of how government procurement uh, should prioritize local manufacturing. Even all of us as South Africans, we need to support local manufacturers. And as we do that in their different sizes, we are supporting uh, local jobs. We still are seeing instances where uh, these uh, designations are not being observed in the way that we would like uh, them uh, to be observed. It is worrying to us why such a, a simple matter becomes very complex unnecessarily because we all understand that if you're not buying from, from, from South Africa, you literally are supporting jobs being created elsewhere. So the, 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 the need uh, for, 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 for a culture change is there. And uh, there are a number of companies that uh, have started in that uh, regard. And this is, this is where, again, when we, 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 we talk about um, just uh, the consciousness of our, our industry, 
and the consciousness of our customers. This is the one area where all of us um, can do a lot more by just being vigilant that where, where really uh, it doesn't make sense to buy uh, something from elsewhere, we insist that we, we are buying it um, uh, from South Africa. So um, the, the, the issue of procurement and, uh, and the localization uh, designation, which we also now want to see more of um, uh, or by, 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 by the private sector, uh, remains an important priority. And uh, I think government, uh, uh, parliament is absolutely correct that we, we, uh, we, we hold not just the, the, the department, but every single uh, entity and uh, also um, the public at large that uh, we have to change, we have to change our consumption patterns to create demand. And when we create demand, the companies will come to meet that demand. And most companies now that are shutting down they're shutting down because there is no demand. And uh, some of these products have been replaced by imports really unnecessarily because it's not always the case that South African products are expensive. It is just a worrisome trend that South African products sometimes seem to be locked out of South African value chains. And uh, this is part of the work that uh, we are trying to address um, through the, uh, the master plans. My colleague Maudu will talk, uh, 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 Honorable Mbuyani, um, more about the Nkomasi um, Industrial Park in Pumalanga. I've, 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 um, Spoken about some of the challenges uh, with the with the with the take up, um, we we've, we 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 are trying uh, 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 the road shows, but of course with the uh, with uh, limitations uh, arising from uh, our our ways of mitigating um, uh, COVID. Um, so some of the other ways is going now to community uh, radios to try and uh, gather uh, as, as as much support. For, for the work that we do and uh, hear from even entrepreneurs, what would be some of the challenges uh, for them to access uh, the funding and uh, the, the support measures that the DTIC uh, is, um, is putting together. But at local level, Honorable uh, Mbuyan, if I, I have to be honest, we, we do find that um, beyond the important infrastructure challenges um, that uh, may be there, just the knowledge uh, from from some of our colleagues of what is happening in their own localities, the enterprises there is not what uh, where it needs uh, to be. So our colleagues, even from the export side, are now working with the municipalities so that um, the registration of some of the potential exporters uh, it's uh, it's uh, it's it's done in a way that the municipalities would be aware of um, the different enterprises that are in, in their own uh, locality. And um, the, 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 the master plans, I've spoken about it. So I'll just ask in addition to Maoto, um, if uh, uh, Stephen, you can maybe uh, come in on um, uh, some of the issues uh, related to um, the, the the points that Honourable Thring uh, would have uh, would have raised, and uh, even um, uh, 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 Honourable Mulder um, uh, would have raised, and uh, if there's uh, any other colleague uh, that may want to uh, also add, uh, they are welcome to do so. So over to you, um, Acting DDG uh, Mautu, and then to our um, uh, chief economist, uh, Stephen Hanifa. Thank you, Chair. Thanks, thanks, uh, DJ, and uh, thanks, Chair. Um, thanks, uh, Honorable Mbuyanu, for that question. I think um, for some time now, the challenges in the Mbumalanga area um, have been raised genuinely so by the <clears throat> Honorable Members. Um, even as the, as the DTIC, we were quite concerned about the snail pace on the implementation of Ngomazi SEZ. Um, the challenges there were emanating from two areas. The first one was just issues around the instabilities in the province. Um, I think in the last uh, uh, presentation to the portfolio committee, um, we had raised this, uh, the same concern that um, there has been a serious turnover at both MEGA and the department uh, that 
are responsible for the SCZ. I, th I, I, can't, I lost count of how many acting HODs and MECs we've met in the province. Um, even to date, um, MECA, which was responsible for the implementation, still doesn't have a CEO. Um, they've only appointed the board yesterday. So that was part of the reason why there has been a challenge in terms of the implementation, but also the coordination, um, as the DG has indicated, um, we've had challenges with regards to the coordination between provinces and municipalities. And part of the reasons why most of the SCSs get delayed is because of the approval processes. Uh, so in some instances, it could be um, EIAs, um, township establishment, the water use license, or even building plans. So that was part of the challenge that we encountered. But since the introduction of the new reconfigured approach to the implementation of the SCZ program by the minister, which was approved by Cabinet, which then sought to um, instill um, and, and strengthen the um, the involvement of national government in the implementation of this SCZ because majority of the SCZs are owned by provinces, they're implemented and managed by the provinces. As the DTI only provide policy direction, but now with the new approach, we are directly involved. So since the involvement of the DTIC in the Bumalanga province, there has been some improvements in so far as the implementation. When we got involved um, either this year, there was not even a company that was running the affairs of the SCZ. Um, but since we got involved, we've now managed to establish an SCZ company. Um, they've seconded number of people. Um, they've seconded, they, they, uh, they also have a full-time uh, CFO now. They're working on the second man of the CEO who then uh, be in charge of the SCZ program. Um, we've also deployed our national PMU, which is led by the former DG, uh, Mr. Lionel October, which is also providing technical support to the implementation of the SCZ program, uh, that side. So we've now, we've, we're currently building systems for the company, but on the ground, we're also finalizing the town planning issues. Uh, one of the key challenges that, or issues that we're currently dealing with in partnership with our stakeholders is that when we submitted the application for um, <clears throat> Um, the um, EIAs and township establishment to Sandra. Um, Sandra give, uh, gave us a feedback and indicated that because of the volume of traffic that will go inside the SCZ, we need to build an interchange on the N4. Uh, but we're now uh, engaging with them to just give, um, um, give them addendum to indicate that the SCZ would be developed gradually. So even the traffic impact will not be um, that huge um, in the next uh, two, three, four years. So once we get that, there will be a dust on the ground. We'll begin with the um, site clearance, with the uh, fencing and the bulk infrastructure. But I'm confident, uh, Honorable Mbwane, that um, now with our involvement, um, we, we're seeing a lot of improvements. We've appointed the full-time board. So all the things that we've been worried about as a national uh, uh, the government, I think um, they have been uh, clarified. And similar thing, uh, we're going to be implementing this. So even the coordination level, we're pre implementing the issues at the, within the context of the development model. So uh, we're no longer uh, allowing the province to be a sole driver of the SCZ. We are saying that as we develop the SCZ, all three spheres of government must be involved at the level of coordination, uh, co uh, coordination and management of the SCZ. So in that region, we're working with the um, <clears throat> Gomazi municipality, we're working with Etanzen, which is the district, we're working with the province and agencies, and we evolve as the DTIC. So in terms of coordination, we have provided a direction in terms of the involvement of all spheres of government, clarification of roles and responsibilities. So the same thing would also be um, uh, replicated insofar as the industrial parks, such as uh, Eka Industrial, which for some time have had problems. So we're quite confident, uh, Honorable Mbuyane, that we, we're going to achieve um, the, um, the set targets now. Thank you very much, uh, DJ. Uh, thank you, Stephen. Uh, thank you. Um, thank you, DJ, and uh, good morning to um, the Honorable Chair and the Honorable Members. Um, so perhaps just to respond to two of the um, the uh, questions and comments made. Um, Honorable Mulder, 
Um, yes, of course, the impact of corruption is is hard to calculate, but we we do know that it's been very substantial over the years. And I think the one point that we would want to make is that there seems to always be a coincidence of corruption where um, the product is being imported. So we've seen this on a number of occasions, whether it's the uh, the trains for Prasa and Transnet, um, whether it's uh, been elements of the uh, the uh, bull program in uh, Madupi and Kosile, and I think even more recently on the PPEs last year, um, you know, the SIU report suggests that significant uh, corruption took place where uh, imports were um, were coming in of uh, whether it's masks, whether it's um, surgical gloves and the like. And of course, members will know that the DTI was um, at the forefront of getting companies, local companies, to ramp up production um, to supply what we um, knew would be a significant uh, spike in demand in, in responding to the, uh, to the COVID um, uh, emergency. And so we, we think it's a, it's a point that we really, we really need to keep making that um, it's not always the case that uh, imports are associated with corruption. Of course, we're not saying that, but it is the case that there is often a coincidence of corruption associated with uh, local companies being bypassed um, by procuring entities uh, wishing to uh, to purchase um, goods from, from abroad. And so we're particularly vigilant around that. And one of the interventions that we've had um, as part of the Economic Reconstruction and Recovery Plan announced by the President um, last year is that uh, both uh, departments, um, state entities, and private sector companies um, have been asked to report in much more detail on their uh, localization activities, on the percentage of their value chain that has been localized, so that we can also begin to get a handle on where the biggest opportunities are to expand localization. Um, we, we, we have to always take the uh, view that the opportunities in localization is dynamic, including as uh, the DG was indicating on the, uh, on the side of vaccine production. There are definitely uh, opportunities for, for localization and we have to uh, exploit those uh, wherever we can. Um, then in terms of um, Honorable Mbiani's um, uh, question around the master plans. So I, I, I think it's important to make the point that the DTIC master plans we've reported on in a bit of detail in the, the presentation and there'll be um, a lot more information coming uh, to the portfolio committee in the annual uh, report presentation. But in terms of the master plans that um, have been developed outside of DTI, so this would include, for example, the, uh, the Oceans Economy Master Plan, the Digital Economy Master Plan, the Renewable Energy Master Plan. Uh, there's also a Cannabis Master Plan that's underway. Uh, there's a Global Business Services Master Plan that is um, uh, being considered at the moment uh, for development. In, in many cases, the processes have been a little bit delayed um, as a result of COVID-19 uh, and the lockdown last year. Uh, but the, uh, the broader master plan steering committee uh, met uh, a few weeks ago now. Uh, we took stock of all the master plan processes in involving uh, more than 12 uh, economic ministries, and we are happy to report that um, although the progress is still a little bit uneven, there is overall very good progress. Um, there are a few master plans that we expect to be finalized within the next uh, three months or so. Um, this would include implementation of the forestry master plan, which has already been approved by cabinet. Uh, we think that the oceans economy master plan is, uh, is really moving with speed. And we think that there's a very high likelihood that that will also be um, approved within the next three months. The renewable energy master plan is, is uh, really moving at pace as well. Um, honorable members will be aware of the president's announcement earlier this year. That's really given some momentum to that. And where we are, in that discussion now is really about um, uh, driving uh, the localization element. So beginning to develop the 
analysis of what the localization opportunity is, how many jobs could be created if we're able to localize some of the components that go into the uh, renewable energy bill program, and then actually beginning to um, uh, put in place the programs that will um, develop those suppliers to be able to um, supply into the program. Um, so in that, in that uh, particular uh, master plan, there's also been very good progress by the Department of uh, Mineral Resources and Energy. And uh, we understand that there's likely to be a executive oversight committee meeting of that master plan in the next uh, few weeks. So, um, uh, Honorable Chair, I, I think the, on the master plans that sit outside of DTI, um, the progress has been a little bit uneven, but we, we're really seeing some momentum building now, and we expect that within the next three months or so, uh, there'll be some really significant announcements of uh, progress there. Um, and of course, the proof um, of the, the pudding is always going to be in terms of whether those master plans can create the jobs that Honorable Thing was alluding to, uh, the jobs for young people um, uh, and the jobs also for, uh, for women, um, as well as jobs in uh, more rural areas. And that's where, for example, the agriculture and agro-processing master plan uh, will, be, uh, will be really critical. Um, so um, thanks, thanks, uh, Chairperson. Thank you, DG. Um, I'd like to stop there. Uh, thank you, Chair. I think from our side, um, th th those would be the responses to the questions that were posed uh, to the department. Uh, back to you, Honorable Chair. Yeah, no, thank you very much, uh, uh, Acting DG, uh, Malebu Thompson and the A-team uh, for the swift response. Uh, Secretariat, if there's any other uh, clarity-seeking question, we can take it or... Okay. There is no hands, any additional hands, Chair, so we can conclude the session. Oh, okay. okay. Oh, thank you very much. Uh, let's uh, give uh, DG Malebu Thompson just a uh, conclusion remarks, one minute conclusion uh, remarks so that we can move to another uh, item. Thank you. Chair, and uh, thank you uh, to, to the members, and uh, thank you for uh, the useful uh, inputs that the members um, have made. Uh, we do take some of, um, we, we take actually all um, your, 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 your input seriously, um, areas where you, you have uh, challenged us um, uh, to, to think differently, to do differently. We do take um, uh, that into account and uh, it's what we will then be taking forward as um, we are implementing the programs. Thank you for um, inviting us uh, to um, come and present this uh, fourth um, uh, quarter report. As I had uh, indicated, we are well seized with the issues of um, dealing with what happened uh, in KZN and some parts uh, of Gauteng. And um, as the committee has already requested the department to come, the minister will be doing so um, in a short while in agreement with the date set by the committee. So um, uh, on, on, on behalf of the, of the, of the colleagues, uh, chairperson and uh, of the department, uh, thank you very much uh, to all the members for their useful inputs and direction. Thank you, Chair. Yeah, thank you very much, DG. Uh, we're stepping off this item, Secretariat, uh, the next item. Chair, okay. if I may, Chair. Yes, you can continue, Secretariat. Chair, the next item on the agenda is consideration of the first draft of the oversight report, the recent oversight report to KwaZulu, Natal, and Gauteng, Chair. Um, 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 we will flight the the, um, the report, and Sekwando Madalani will take the committee through the report for their inputs, Chair. Okay, thank you very much. You can continue, Secretariat uh, Madala. Um, good morning, Chair, and good morning, members. Andre, could you please make me a co-host? I'm unable to share. You are co-host now. My apologies. Thank you. Um, good morning, members. I will be taking you through the draft oversight report. This is the first draft report which was sent um, to members uh, yesterday afternoon. 
Uh, I will go through the report. Uh, however, I'll focus on the key issues, particularly the issues um, of engagement between the different stakeholders that we met and um, the committee. That will be the focus of, of the report. Um, if it is, if that is okay with members that we don't go through line by line, instead we focus on the issues. Would that be okay, Chair? Andre? You okay with it? I think we're waiting for the Chair to give you a go ahead. Okay. Yeah, no, thank you. You can continue. Uh... Secretary. Okay, Chair. Um, the first part is the introduction. The introduction outlines um, the events that led us going to the oversight. Um, then the next section of the introduction uh, states the purpose of our visit um, to KZN and Gauteng, as well as um, the targeted areas um, that we, we went to. It also highlights that this was, uh, in some parts, this oversight um, was a joint venture between our portfolio committee, which is the Portfolio Committee on Trade and Industry, uh, the Portfolio Committee on Small Business Development, as well as the Select Committee on Trade Industry, Economic Development, uh, Small Business Tourism, and Employment in Labor. How the report is, is, is structured, how we've tried to structure the report is to rather separated by um, visits to large enterprises as well as medium enterprises. Then the next session, would, the next section uh, focused on small business. So members, what members would see is that the report is not um, structured by, uh, by province, but rather by the type of enterprises we visited. Um, the next section is the delegation, which were members that were present uh, during the oversight as well as support. Uh, then if we go to uh, number two. Uh, so as I mentioned um, earlier that we um, separated the content of the report by medium and large enterprises, which is the section one. Mainly uh, that was the visit to KZN, the companies we visited in, in KZN. Um, in this section, what we try to do is to, for each of the companies we visited, uh, bring a brief introduction of the company, as well as the extent of the impact of the looting and the violence on the company. And then the next section, we then brought out the issues which um, members engaged on with the company. As I said earlier, I'm not going to go through the, 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 the overview of each company as well as the impact of the looting. Uh, since members have had the report, uh, but I'll focus on issues uh, that we discussed um, with each of the stakeholders. Uh, if members can move to page, we are now on page four. Uh, this is the engagement we had with um, Kings Park uh, manufacturers. They are manufacturers of um, clothing particularly for um, the Foshini group. They uh, manufacture for them and they also manufacture for other um, companies, uh, corporate uniform companies uh, such as Nando's and Spa. Uh, among the issues that were discussed is the issue of uh, job losses um, following the, the looting and um, the vandalism in the company. Members would remember that this company also um, experience um, the burning of one of their of, of their factories. Uh, so the committee discussed the issue of job losses. And while the company at the time had not officially laid off people, there were people that were not back at work yet. Um, out of the 600 people that the company had, uh, only 80 people at the time were back um, at work. And it, the company noted that they would need uh, appro approximately 9.1 million uh, to get half of the staff um, back uh, to work. Another issue that, the com that we discussed with the company was the loss of investment. Um, the members of the committee inquired about um, the loss uh, that the company has incurred, and the company estimated the loss to be between 
uh, 20 and um, 22 million. Uh, this would include building and machinery alone. Uh, there's also losses which relate um, to potential profits, and those had not been estimated um, at the time of our visit. The next issue that we um, discussed uh, with the company was the issue of imports. Given that the company um, is no longer able to, to, to produce at the capacity um, because of these incidences, the company feared that um, uh, the, the, the companies that they supply may switch from um, local production, which is which is not happening at the at the previous capacity, they may switch that to imports. Uh, while the company is unable to produce and they're getting their business back, uh, the uh, companies that they used to supply would then buy imports in the meantime. This is a real concern because uh, if that were to happen, it would take time for this company to gain the space back. Uh, they mentioned up to 10 years to get a space back if your product has been substituted um, with uh, imports. So that was a real concern um, for the company as well as the committee, uh, because as we know, uh, South Africa, we're trying to um, industrialize and making sure that we produce locally. If things, uh, if, if this happens, it will also impact on, 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 on the bigger goal of the country. Another issue that we discussed uh, with the company was the issue of support from uh, the Department of Trade, Industry and Competition, as well as the IDC. The company said that they, were, they had been in contact with the IDC and um, the DTIC, and they were receiving uh, a great deal of support. However, the challenges that they were facing were related to documentation that was required for them to access funding from IDC and DTI because not only had they lost the factory, they had also lost their offices, so um, as well as their computers. So back up to documents uh, would have been difficult um, uh, to, to find. So they were working um, to get those documents together and submit. Uh, that also would have would now delay their process of accessing um, the funding that they need, uh, funding that they need urgently. Another issue that we discussed um, with the company was the impact of value chain. So beyond the impact on the company itself, uh, the company had other suppliers. Uh, those suppliers are now affected, uh, indirectly uh, affected by this because the company has less people back at work. So the things that they need to procure, they procure less of. For example, they mentioned uh, as an example that they use to buy coffee and tea for their uh, employees, which were 600. But now with, with less uh, employees, they buy less. So now it's affecting the company that, from which they, they, they buy uh, coffee. They also mention uh, things such as toilet paper. So as much as uh, we visited companies that were directly affected, there are other companies which are indirectly affected uh, by this. Uh, the next one we went, uh, we talked about was the issue of um, insurance. Um, uh, the company said that they did have insurance and they had submitted claims, but they were waiting um, uh, feedback from the insurers. But another thing that they um, highlighted was that the process are taking so long um, because even the insur insurance uh, companies now are overwhelmed with, with the amount of um, claims that they're getting. Uh, one example was that for them to get an assessor into their, um, into their factory, it took uh, two weeks, which is a long time when you really need um, your claim to be processed as, as, as soon as possible. Uh, then I'll move to the next one. The next one is Siapan Bili Manufacturing. Uh, then I will go to page six uh, for the issues that we discussed with them. Uh, Siapambili is a cable company that has um, uh, 30 employees and they'd also been significantly affected uh, with looting as well as vandalism of their offices. Um, and um, they've lost um, mil uh, millions uh, worth of, of, of cables. 
um, of the 30 employees at the time, only eight were back. And um, the eight that were back were, were, were back to um, help with the cleanup and, and restoring um, the company rather than um, actual work. Then we discussed losses. Um, while the company had not had like a full determination of losses, uh, they highlighted that they had lost um, cables uh, with over 500,000, as well as expensive diagnostic um, um, equipment. Um, we will move to the next one. The next one is SA AMCO. Uh, the issues are on page seven. I hope I'm not moving too fast. Yeah, no, no, no. We are, we are still in chat. We are still in chat. You can continue, Secretary. Okay, okay. I'm trying to also manage time because this is a lot of information. Um, then we went to SA AMCO. SA AMCO, we discussed also um, the issue of jobs. Um, SA AMCO, they were uh, not operating when we visited them. Other employees were still at home because their building was um, badly bent and um, it would take time to demolish first the building as well as um, rebuild. Uh, that also takes us to number 2B. Uh, they said that um, to demolish the building, it first needed to be demolished, uh, which would take up to eight, eight months. Then uh, rebuilding would then take up to 18 months, which means, um, up to two years, uh, people would would remain um, without uh, jobs. Then we discussed uh, issues of replacement cost. So they they highlighted a figure of 1.3 billion of estimated cost, which uh, excludes salaries as well as profits. Similar to the the clothing manufacturer, we also discussed the issue of imports um, with SA Amco. Is that um, the companies that they supply would now um, switch to, to imports. However, the situation was different with SA Amco. What's different is that they have other, other companies, in, in, in same company, but in different countries. So rather than um, their customers uh, importing from, from other companies, they would still import, import from they will import from SA Amco, but in a in a in a different country. Um, then another one we discussed was issue of um, insurance claim. Uh, they had said that they were waiting awaiting feedback. They had put on um, a claim. Um, another issue that we discussed was the issue of foreign direct investment. As we know, SA Amco is um, owned by foreign investors. Uh, which are not um, South African. It is um, it is therefore um, a foreign direct investment in into the country. While the local managers had put proposals um, to the international investors for rebuilding and um, starting fresh, um, they were still awaiting a decision on that. So there was a, a bit of uncertainty on uh, the way forward. Another issue that we discussed was the issue of law enforcement uh, during the, the looting and the, and the violence. Um, they noted that while uh, they had called law enforcement, law enforcement um, was unable to deal with the amount of people that were around as the streets um, around the factory were closed. Another one that we visited was Trico Electrical. Trico Electrical is a black industrialist company uh, which has 48 um, employees. Um, it had also been looted with um, the building and the cars and, and their cars burnt. Um, they had lost significant amount of, of cables. Um, we were, however, unable to engage with the management or the owners of um, this company because they were not on site. However, we were taken around. Um, the site by Mr. Clausen. Uh, then we move to the next one, uh, which is the United Pharmaceutical Distributors, which is also linked um, to the Clicks group. The issues are on page 10. 
Can I still continue, Chair? Yes, you can continue, not unless there are clarity in question, but we'll have inputs on after your presentation. Thank you. Okay, Chair. Then, then on UPD, we discussed the issue of arrests uh, of um, the culprits. Uh, they noted that the vandalism was um, was in a way planned because the cameras that were in the building had been disabled. However, there is um, one that they might get and uh, possibly uh, get some um, feed from it uh, to possibly um, initiate um, the issue of arrest with the police. Uh, the next issue that we discussed with them was the issue of um, a stolen um, Shackle 6 drugs, as well as the um, vaccines. Uh, what happened with vaccines is that the fridge that was that vaccines were stored in had been um, plug removed, so the fridge was not working, which compromised um, the safety of the vaccines. Uh, so they had to destroy those vaccines. Those, those are COVID-19 vaccines. And they estimated a value of 4.9 million. This had an impact on access to vaccines then in the province of KwaZulu-Natal. This links to the next one, um, the impact of looting on the healthcare sector. The next one we uh, visited was Transform. Transform is uh, linked to the ShopRite group. Um, so Transform's uh, issue was uh, was sort of different. They were not um, directly affected by the looting. Uh, they had um, tried to protect their, their distribution center. So they were not um, affected uh, directly by, uh, by the looting. However, uh, their supply chains were were affected because of um, disruptions in, in, in the province. Um, the distribution uh, took longer and they were, they were uh, struggling to, um, to distribute the product. Uh, but the strategies that they've, they've used now, uh, one of the issues that was raised by members was the, the lead time between uh, getting the product. Um, and they had said that that has moved from 48 hours to up to two weeks. So they needed to make contingents for that. So they would keep uh, two weeks of stock. Uh, uh, then we spoke about their protection strategy. I, I think one of the things that they highlighted is that um, they were in a fortunate position because they were able to get um, security uh, to protect um, their premises and they tried uh, different strategies. That is why they were not um, affected by, um, uh, directly affected by the looting and the vandalism. The next one uh, that we visited was Malay. Malay is a German company, which is 100% uh, foreign owned. With Malay, similar to, to Transform, there was no um, direct um, impact. However, there was indirect impact because um, production had to stop to stop because employees were not uh, were unable to come to work. So even with companies that were not directly affected, there is indirect effect um, on, on those companies. The next one would be Tiger Brands. For Tiger Brands, under Tiger Brands, we engaged with Albany Bakery, Testic, as well as uh, their uh, snacks and treats division, which um, um, is Beacon uh, Snacks and, and Treats division. So they were also, all, all, all three were, were affected, um, but the main one that was affected was Albany um, Bakery. So with them, the committee discussed um, the loss and um, the lost to equipment that was damaged, um, the factories, as well as the finished goods um, that were looted. I must say that the, the Tiger Brands uh, divisions uh, were back in operations at the time when, we, when the committee visited. However, they cited um, significant losses. 
uh, tested rice uh, cited um, losses of finished goods of up to 55 million and um, 150 million lost in sales. And because the impact goes beyond um, the period from which the looting happened, they said that they would um, incur further losses in terms of sales um, for the month of August, which is approximately um, 28 uh, million. The Beacon Snacks and Streets plant um, had lost stock of approximately 58 million. Then another matter that, that arose was the issue of security uh, of investment and political risk. Um, however, the question, while it was not um, responded to, um, the committee did raise. Another issue um, was getting back to operation, which they had said that they were back in operations. However, they were not back into full operation mode because there were equipment that had been damaged during um, this per period that needed to be either serviced or imported, and that would take um, quite some time. Then the next one was Sipla. On page, starting on bottom of page 14. So um, we visited Sipla. Sipla is a medicine manufacturer, uh, mainly um, ARVs. Um, so what happened at Sipla is that uh, people got into the um, into the plant, which compromised their um, their standards. Because if you're producing uh, medicines, you you are required to comply to certain standards. Uh, for example, you wouldn't get um, into a, a medicine manufacturing plant without having the proper gear to protect um, yourself and to protect the plant. So with people getting in, uh, it compromised uh, that, which meant that uh, Sipla had to not only fix the, 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 the vandalism that happened in the plant, but also uh, do a requalification to ensure that the plant um, um, start, the plant um, meets the new standards, which we breach. So with Sibla, they said that to get the plant operational, operational again, it would take up to four months um, to get that again, because it's not only a process of um, fixing uh, what has been um, vandalized, it's a matter of um, of getting new equipment that, that would also uh, need to be imported. Another issue is that uh, because they lost a significant amount of, of the inputs we, for which they use for, for, for medicine, um, they were engaging the Department of Health to get permits to import uh, those inputs. However, that negotiation with the Department of Health was still um, ongoing. The next issue that the committee raised was the issue of tariffs and local procurement law. So the committee wanted to find out if there's any laws that would prohibit them from importing this. Um, and they um, confirmed that uh, from the Department of Trade and Industry side, which is trade, there were no um, laws that would, um, that would be challenging for them to import this. However, there were requirements from SAPRA, which is an entity of the Department of Health, because SAPRA has requirements of um, where the, the product would be imported from, uh, where, uh, whether the manufacturer is registered with them or not, and, and other requirements. So they were targeting to import um, from India, uh, however, uh, that was also still an issue of negotiation with the Department of Health and SAPRA. The next one was issue of security. Um, uh, at the time, they had said that they've um, intensified their security uh, because they had seen that uh, they had not had enough security at the time of the incident. The next one was Tonga Tulit. The committee, um, when we engage with Tonga Tulit, they made a significant presentation uh, to the committee. 
However, that presentation did not focus on what the com committee was there for, because the committee was there to understand um, the impact of looting on the company. The Tongat's presentation focused on the broader issues of the sugar industry, which included um, your transformation, your sustainability, as well as the development of small um, scale growers. So that we could not get much out of Tonga for that. However, we also, um, on our way um, out, we also were um, shown uh, the ShopRite uh, Center as well as other shops that had been looted, uh, vandalized and burnt. Um, so um, those are the companies that we visited in KZN, which are uh, medium and large enterprises. I will move uh, now to the section on small businesses and informal traders. So the committee joined um, the other two committees, as I've mentioned earlier, which is the PC on small business, as well as the select committee. The issues in this section uh, also include um, the visits to KZN and the visits to Gauteng because the issues with small business were similar. So this section is um, uh, issue-based. Um, so if an issue was, if some issues were similar in KZN and, 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 and um, Gauteng. So we, we visited um, different areas, different malls, um, informal traders, um, uh, in the in both uh, areas. So the one issue was for members uh, to understand the extent of of the damage on the provinces, uh, which is on page sixteen. As we move to page seventeen, uh, then the issue of losses of stock, income, and profits to owners of businesses as well as informal traders and informal traders um, was raised um, is that not only were the, the shops were, were affected, informal traders such as uh, people that sell vegetables outside um, a mall were, were, were also affected. Uh, the committee also met with the owner of a salon which um, had lost um, over 80,000 rand in, in equipment and, and goods. Um, then the other issue that was discussed is the issue of loss of income and loss of jobs, because um, a number of shops were not back um, being operational uh, after the vandalism. So uh, people were sitting at home with, with no jobs until uh, they were called again, which is a, a, a significant impact, um, not only on those people that had lost their jobs, but also their families. Uh, livelihood had been in fact, uh, affected um, because uh, one of the, of the things that was highlighted during the visit was that each member of the community that is employed, they support six to seven people. So the impact was beyond just um, job losses. Then another issue was the issue of loss of property. Beyond the looting, there was vandalism of property and burning of property. Uh, so uh, other people had lost um, not only the stock or the goods from which they sell, they also uh, lost uh, property. And um, a significant number of properties had to be rebuilt um, from the ground up because uh, they were not suitable to just be to just be fixed. And uh, while some had insurance um, and they put on claims, others didn't have, especially um, the smaller enterprises um, didn't have um, insurance. They highlighted that. Then another issue that was highlighted was the issue of access to healthcare. As a result of the looting, uh, there were companies that um, tried to make sure that healthcare is accessible uh, by uh, providing services that would otherwise be um, provided by a clinic, uh, maybe because the clinic is far or, or for some other reasons. Uh, they were servicing um, uh, chronic conditions such as HIV and diabetes, 
Uh, so with the looting, people are now unable to access their, their medicines. They now have to travel to a clinic, a clinic which is already overburdened um, with, with, with people. So that, would, that was the impact. Another issue that was discussed is the linkages between informal traders and malls. So in some areas where we find that the informal traders were not affected uh, directly, but they were affected indirectly. So people that go to a mall, they go to a mall, but they would also pass the small traders and buy from them. If the mall is closed, right, that means uh, less people are coming um, uh, through. Uh, that means also the informal traders are then affected. Then another issue which does not relate um, particularly to, to enterprises, it relates to municipalities. Municipalities were also affected because uh, municipalities also get rates and taxes from, from companies. But when they're not providing a service, they would not get um, that money. So it is estimated that um, municipalities will also lose millions uh, as a result. Uh, because especially with, with the malls, they will lose um, millions of friends uh, in that, which will affect their functioning. The next issue was the issue of making um, services more accessible. Even with the, with the reduced income of municipalities, they need to ensure that they provide um, services to local businesses, uh, particularly informal traders. One uh, of the things that was highlighted was the access to permits, uh, which now would be provided free. Uh, previously, um, informal traders were required to pay a small amount, but now um, municipalities are providing that at no charge. A permit um, is, is important because it allows the informal trader to be registered. It also, um, is important when they are applying for funding. So if they went to CEDA, then CEDA would ask like, um, do you have like a trading permit? Are you registered with the municipality? So that is why that, that was important. The last part was um, just a highlighting of um, CEDA's, uh, CEDA and CIFA's packages uh, to support um, enterprises and uh, small businesses and informal traders um, during this time. It was also highlighted that um, other departments are putting together, putting together packages to support uh, the affected uh, businesses. I think that's all, Chair, from my side. Um, Mr. Herman yesterday um, said that um, our members uh, can um, add on conclusions. We usually leave that open for members. Uh, to include uh, member uh, conclusions and recommendations to the report. Thank you, Chair. Yeah, no, thank you very much for more informative report. Uh, I think now it's for members, as you say, alluded to, that members uh, can make input now. Uh, the, uh, by the assistant of the secretary, I'll be able to show members if they wish to speak. And also, Chair. yes, uh, Secretariat. Chair, we will have Mr. McPherson and Mr. Thing <coughs> who raised their hands, Chair. <coughs> okay. Uh, Honorable McPherson and uh, Honorable Three. Thanks, Mr. Mbuyani. Um, may I suggest that we, now that we've gone through this, I mean, this seems to be uh, uh, well captured. Um, can I then suggest that we then uh, make those submissions for conclusions and recommendations in writing, uh, that we can then flight them as we previously do, and we can sort of try and, uh, try and uh, come to a consolidated uh, position. So I'd just like to recommend that we uh, sort of put them in writing, um, and then the secretary tries to bash it into shape, and then we, uh, we then try and uh, insert that uh, on agreement of everyone into conclusions and recommendations. Thanks. Thank you very much, uh, Honorable uh, Tri. Uh, uh, thank you, thank you, Chair. I, I think certainly um, the the presentation on the uh, report of the protests and the 
uh, effect that it's had on businesses across the country, in particular KZN and KwaZulu Natal, um, uh, is is well is well captured. Um, also, I think it reflects uh, what was discussed by the by the businesses, uh, as well as members uh, who were present. So so well done to the secretariat. Uh, in terms of the presentation that they've um, given to us um, on that particular report. My question would be, or my thoughts, uh, Chair, would be uh, in terms of the way forward, uh, <clears throat> whether we are expected to give our uh, um, concluding remarks uh, to that particular report today, or whether it is going to be sent to us where we can actually send it uh, through perhaps uh, later today in, in writing, uh, I'm not sure what the time frames are, so if we could just get some clarity with regards to going ahead. Chair, uh, Mrs. Okay. Hermans, Chair. Okay, uh, Honorable Hermans. Uh, thank you, Chair, and thank you to the team uh, DTIC for a very uh, well-captured report. I just wanted to say that under Mahlebe, the I think I got a very uh, strong impression from their presentation of the, the way the community came forward uh, and, and workers came forward to, to, um, to defend the company. And I think that's a very important message because it speaks to good uh, um, uh, corporate responsibility. I don't know, uh, maybe uh, I missed it, um, Ms. Madalani, but... Uh, Otherwise, uh, Chair, I, I'm supporting Honorable McPherson's proposal that uh, we, we do what as we normally do in the past uh, and submit in writing and then see how we uh, consolidate. Okay, did I miss it? Okay, thank you. Okay, no, no, thank you very much, uh, uh, Weep. Uh, I think we are all in agreement here. Uh, that the parties uh, must submit the uh, written submission in terms of the conclusion and the, the recommendation uh, by the end of uh, the business day today, uh, five o'clock, so that we are able to consolidate and put into one report. Uh, I think that is the proposal that was made by all members here. And okay. also... Sorry, yes. my apologies, Chair. We have Mr. Kappel who raised his hand, Chair, and also Mr. McPherson, Chair. Well, okay. Now we can have uh, Mr. Cadbet uh, followed by uh, McPherson. Thanks, Chairperson. Uh, Chair, just uh, one piece of added information, and I'm sure that the Secretary can confirm this. I did have a conversation um, with the MD whilst we were busy doing the tour during, uh, throughout um, Tonga Hewlett. And he said to me that they had lost 100 million rand um, due to the unrest and that one of the um, stalls where they keep sugarcane, 4,000 tons of sugarcane was looted. So I think we should just confirm that information. And it is unfortunate that we didn't have an opportunity to discuss the effect of the social unrest on their business operations as much as we would have liked to and how we were given the similar opportunity to do so with other businesses. Okay, thanks, uh, Mr. Cuthbert. We'll get the response from the Secretariat. Uh, over to you, Mr. McPherson. Thanks, Mr. Mboyani. Just a process question then from Andre. When do we want to have final deliberations on this report? Uh, is that tomorrow? Chair, if I may, Chair? Yes you, yes, you can. Chair, we have scheduled a, a final consideration for Friday morning. I know the House is sitting from 10 o'clock onwards, but we would like to, to conclude our business before uh, um, the, that about quarter to 10. So the intention is for the committee to uh, um, meet from half past eight maybe, so that we can just finalize the conclusions and, and recommendations and uh, formally adopt the report. So, because I think tomorrow there is an issue of the election of the speaker. So I think that is going, tomorrow we do not know how it will unfold. So. I would suggest we'd rather do it on Friday morning and give us opportunity to, to panel bid the conclusions and the recommendations and forward it to members for their, for their consideration. And hopefully we schedule, uh, we can meet on Friday morning from office eight onwards before, until quarter to 10 to, to, to adopt the report chair. 
So, Mr. Imbayani, if I may then just suggest, uh, because it's now uh, um, just uh, going on to uh, half past 11, may, may I suggest, if we can, that we that we just push that uh, that submission timeline to midday tomorrow. It just gives us 24 hours just to put that all together, and then that should give the secretariat enough time to to uh, to do the, uh, the the necessary formatting um, uh, through through the afternoon um, ahead of the meeting on Friday. Uh, I, I just think it just gives us a little, just a little bit more time. Thanks, thanks, Mr. Mbiani. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Mr. McPherson. Uh, I can see the hand of uh, Hermes. Honorable uh, Hermes. You, yeah, thank you, Chair. I was uh, raising my hand to make uh, exactly the submission that uh, Honorable McPherson just made now for a midday tomorrow. Thank you. Oh, okay. No, thanks. Uh, I think the proposal has been uh, seconded here yeah, that uh, the due date for today is rescheduled for tomorrow in the midday so that we are able to submit, all of us were able to submit their remarks in terms of the conclusion and the recommendation. I don't know if there's a different view around the proposal and the secondment of the submission. We can have the, the views open for discussions. Secretariat. Sure. I do not have any hands. I don't know if Mr. Mrs. Herman's hands is still an old uh, previous, I won't call it old previous hand. <laughs> Yet it is an old previous hand. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's an old previous yeah, hand. Thank you. Uh, that means in terms of uh, this item, we will be able to step off by resolving that uh, the submission will be uh, midday tomorrow uh, from all parties in terms of the concluding remarks and also recommendation. Uh, and also the issue of uh, that was raised by Honorable Cutbet, the issue of 100 million, we will check the report there and, and, and try to consolidate uh, the report. Uh, any other submission that uh, uh, members feel that is not part of the report, they are welcome to submit uh, to the secretariat so that we consolidate a, a very much a clear report that is uh, undertaken by the committee. I don't know, secretariat, if there's any other item, we step off this item so that we continue with the other item. Chair, there is no further item. We are clear that tomorrow the... Um, but before maybe I conclude, Mr. Tring raises his hand, Chair. Okay, Honorable Tring. Uh, my apologies, I had myself muted. If I could just request, uh, Andre, if you could actually, or if the Secretary could send me the, the presentation, I've looked through my emails and for some reason I have could not find it, not unless it wasn't sent to us. The... the Mr. Ping, are you referring to the presentation of this morning? Uh, not the morning's presentation. I'm talking about the report on the protests. Okay, we will will forward it to you. If it will, we will forward it to you, Mr. Ping. Thank you. No Chair, yes. Yeah. If I may, okay, so there no further issues from outside chair that we will ex we will will await the, the submissions from parties by twelve by midday tomorrow, twelve o'clock tomorrow, and make the necessary. Uh, um, um, and ensure that it's procedurally in order when we present it to the committee on Friday morning, Chair, starting half past eight. So nothing from outside, and there's no further agenda items, Chair. Oh, okay, thank you very much. I think also the, the question by Honorable Trig, we will be also uh, clarified in terms of uh, resending the emails yes. in terms of the report, yes. Uh, I think if there's no other item to be dealt with. I think let me just take the opportunity to thank you uh, members for participating here yeah? and also uh, uh, check whether and there's any announcement on your side secretariat before we can conclude. No, no additional announcements, Chair. We're fine from outside, Chair. Oh, okay. Thank you very much, uh, members. The meeting stands at chain. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Long live the chair. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank you, chair. chair. Thank well, you. well done on your cheering, chair. Don't lose yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs>